beast, isn't they? Chuffed to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him, man. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel and to the workshop for what feels like an absolute age since we were last here. But today, I'm out and about, beavering away, making rigs. What am I making? What are you making, bro? Um, right. This is the starting point. Everything else is up for discussion. So what am I making? I think genuinely, and I'm a convert, this might be the scratching rig. The scratching rig for that time when you're focused on your species, nothing's happening, and you need to pull one out of a bag. And the reason why you're doing that is because you just want to save from the blank. So this one could cover it all, I think, to a certain degree. And I'll explain myself. So very recently, I went fishing with Shane, Fishing Dorset Life, um, kind invitation down to pull, chase for flounder. And this is the background to the story to the rig. I was dead focused on a certain rig, length of snoods, pop-ups, and it just wasn't happening. It just wasn't happening. Shane calls over, I got another one. And you're like, oh, really? So there's people left and right of you pulling fish out and you're doing a real good job of blanking. So very kindly, he walks over, he says, try one of these, buddy. Gives me a rig, this rig. This is my version of his rig. Um, with subtle changes, but this is all Shane's work. I'd gone down that rabbit hole of thinking, length of snood, flowing trace, bait presentate. It wasn't working. In this, in this example, it just wasn't working. And I needed to swap things up. I put one of these rigs on, and I, I, you can't make this stuff up. It's on a video, um, the two flounder videos from Paul. You'll see, I use one of these rigs, and both times, there he was, hook up, hook up. You're like, oh, what's different? My rig wasn't that much different, but it was different. And I think that's where I'm trying to go with this. Shane's put a lot of time and effort into making this the rig that it is. I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. I've made a slight change. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, so I'm going to share with you what Shane shared with me, because it works. And it is literally as simple as, that ends up, that's the rig body. It's 36 inches long in total. We'll work out and I'll show you how we make it. You can pause and copy and, and do all that good stuff, because we can share this. Um, and it's just three swivels trapped between beads. So it's a three hook scratching rig but it's a flapper, it's not, it's not clipped down. And where this really gets in is it's short snoods. Short snoods that you can adapt. So we can make the detachable snoods different hook sizes, different line strengths. Put them in bags of three, use the little bags that, you know, have a couple of these bodies made up, have a few variations made up, you can bait them up whilst you're watching your lines out, and then when you bring it in, unclip, clip on, and out she goes. Brilliant. It does work well, and it's a good fishing technique for a rapid turnaround of baits. So if you're fishing soft baits, worm baits, it's perfect. It's ideal. So let's get on, less jibber jabbering, get on and make it. So what do we need to start off with? We need a rig body. Do we need a strong rig body for this one? No. So I am looking at 60 pound rig body. I've gone to my trusted favorite, Asso. And it's Asso Ultraflex, um, 60 pound. A good go-to covers, light fishing, just, it, it's good stuff. I like the way it ties. I like the way it flexes or doesn't flex. It's got a bit of give to it. I've got marks on the bench. And I'm going to cut it to about, using a pair of clippers, I've lost my Solingen ones, and I've ended up with fishing tax ones, expensive ones. Um, yeah, I need another pair of the others. 
if you watch the other videos, you'll know exactly what I mean. Right, let's just move that out of the way. So we've ended up with our rig body. And it's nothing more complicated than we need to put a full stop on that because when we thread the components on, we don't want them just all falling off. It just makes life easy. So the weight clip of choice is, and this will be a trend throughout this film, I think, because it's Gemini components. It's a super strength Genie Link. That's what I'm using. I'm learning how to use this new camera. So I trashed my last camera. <laughs> it fell on its face, which doesn't go well for an expensive camera. Um, went over on the tripod, smashed the automatic lens function and all that kind of stuff on it. Um, right, so I've just threaded on our little super strength genie link. And I'm not going to dwell too much on knots. Two, three, because you use your knot of choice, whether that's, well, whatever you're going to use. Grin or not. Half blood, blood would tuck, any of those. Um, tied my knot, moisten the line. Use a little tiny knot puller, really inexpensive little tool. Just make sure, and then just gently cinch your knot down. Tighten it all up. Check that it's all seated. That's what we're doing. And then trim the tag end. So we've got our rig body with our full stop on the end, and that's where we're at. So we're gonna thread a series of components on now. Windy outside. Um, I'll do one, and then we'll do the for three others, because it's, it's not exactly a spectator sport, is it? So we will, what have we got? Beads, I wanna talk about beads. So out of all the variations of beads, and I've got all different selections and, and all the other bits and pieces, in my experimenting and playing around, for size, quality, shape, I do actually genuinely like these, and I'm checking who they're made by. Seaglow Fish and Tackle, and they're Aero Beads. So they're weenie. You know my little fat sausage fingers struggle with this kind of stuff? That's what we got. So they're aero beads, and they're like little egg shaped. So we're gonna be using those today. Um, what else we got? I am gonna be using crimps. So I'm gonna be using the Sukuma crimps. Got a match crimp size to your line size. So these are 0.83 millimeter, and these are 0.7 millimeter line. So these crimps are perfect for that. And swivels. Swivels is worth having a quick chat about. So let's move on to swivels and look at the swivels. So Gem and I do these stunning little stainless steel 60 pounders. But they're too small for my sausage fingers. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using the non-stainless steel 45 pound versions just because the difference in size just makes them that much easier to tie for me. If you can and get away with using the 60s, weenie ones, then I wholly recommend those. But for ease of my time and my skills, I'm going with the, with the 45s. So we've got 45s, we've got beads, and we've got, I've put them down, can't find them. And we've got the crimps, all with our rig body. So as always, threading components isn't really a spectator sport, but we need to cover all aspects in case you haven't seen this before. For those that have, I apologise. So first up, we are going to go with a crimp. Thread it onto the line. Lovely fit, tight enough to be tight, but not tight that it's um, too difficult to thread on. We need one of these ultra weenie beads. I'm only gonna show you threading on of one set of components and then we'll, we'll click past. We'll save you the pain. Um, and a bead, 
the swivel. And the beauty of this, once we've shown you it, you can just repeat the exact setup again. Um, and it'll make it a lot nicer and easier for you to watch. And the swivel. Next bead on top of that swivel. Make sure I get it round the right way. With the aero ones, you can get them round the wrong way. And a crimp. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus on those components. Let's have a look. You see those? We're going to focus on those. Not keen, is it? Let's see if we can get the camera to focus on those. See those? So you've basically got a crimp, a bead, a swivel, a bead, and a crimp. So we're going to repeat that twice more. So that's the three sets of components on. Basically it is a crimp, a bead, a swivel, a bead and a crimp, three times over onto the rig body with your choice of weight clip at the end. And then to hold all that captive so it doesn't all just fall off, I prefer, or my preference is, to top it off with a swivel. Some people will put a clip at the top. Um, I put my clip on the shock leader. I get told this all the time, people prefer it the other way around. They put their swivel on their shock leader and their clip on the top of their rig. Um, but it's personal preference. Three. Um, my knot for all of these is a Grinner knot. Two, three. And use my knot puller. You can make up a piece of wire, you can use a clip, you can use a lead weight. You can, there's all different, different people have different preferences for how they snug up their rigs. And the tag end so we are now fully captive we have got a weight clip a swivel a piece of rig body between I've chosen 60 pound you can upscale that downscale that to your own personal preference and we have got three sets of swivels trapped between beads and crimps but we've not set them yet so that is our rig body and we will set that aside and we'll talk about hook snoods so my choice of hook snood for this at the moment is going to be 18 pound. It is red, fish predominantly at night in the Solent areas. I think red is less visible. Clear, you could argue, well, what's the difference, Mark? This is what I've got. This is what I'm using. So how long do we cut this piece of snood? We cut it the same length as our rig body, an exact match. And it doesn't have to be millimeter perfect. But we will snip it off and there we have it. Now then, this is the beauty. Do you want a generic rig, a specific rig? You can have a short top snood, you can have a long bottom snood, you can have an in-between, in-between. Choice is yours. By starting off with the same length as the body, however you decide to cut this, it's all going to be the same. It's all going to fit that same rig body, isn't it? You could even argue that you can go longer on the bottom um, because it can hang past the weight. Whatever you choose. Whatever you would like. Let's have a quick look at the length. We come out at, ended up 36. So we are looking at three 12 inch snoods. 12 inch that once tied will probably be more like 9 to 10. 9 to 10 inches. I think that's where we're aiming for. The golden 10. I have three identical length hook snoots. What are we going to tie onto those? Well, 
first things first, how are we going to make them detachable? We are going to use Gemini Genie Snood Links. These are quite small and it will give us the detachable snoods we're looking for for this particular rig. You could tie these snoods directly onto those swivels and do away with the detachable aspect that we're looking at here. So with one of those 10 inch hook snoods, I'm just going to tie this on. One, three. I know it's not exactly a spectator sport watching people tie knots. Um, there's plenty of knot videos on the inter on YouTube and the internet. I've showcased a lot of these knots before in my films. Um, more than welcome to delve back and have a look at some of the other rig making videos. There's loads of rig making videos on the video on the on the cha on the video on the channel. So there we have a detachable snood on the end of a. A detachable clip on the end of a hook snood. We now repeat that three times over. So hard to see, but we now have three hook snoods one, two, three, which are just 10 inch lengths of line with detachable clips. We can now sort of discuss or think about what our hook choice is. So one aspect that I've been trying lately, and it's all experimentation, um, you could say that the default is like a Camasan B940, which is like a match angler's choice of hooks. And you can catch big fish on small hooks, small fish on small hooks. It's hard to catch small fish on big hooks. So something like a, a Camasan B940 size four would make for a good scratching hook. Well, cho well trusted. Um, used by many. Something I have been looking at and playing with recently is these Cox and Royal scratching match hooks. Cox and Royal scratching match hooks. And I've got them in size 2, size 4 and size 1O. Generically I think the size 4 and 2 for all round scratching there's a chance of something else or if, you, if you're fishing in an area where there's thick fish like bass or something maybe it would be worth going up to the uh, size 10. But I think for a small hook choice the same as the B940 a size 4 hook it's a good scratching hook most things will be able to get these get these in their mouths we'll go for three of these So they've got quite an aggressive shape to these. It's going to be hard to show it, I think. But can you see that belly in the in the actual hook, where another hook would be straight towards the end? It's it's almost rising into circle hook territory, but with a long shank. Just see, obviously, that part of the hook there, the throat. I suppose you could call that the throat of the hook. It's got that bend to it. It's just that when you present a bait along there, where my finger is, you can see you get quite an aggressive point out the back. So these are the Cox and Royal scratching match hooks. So if we go for one of our detachable snoods and one of these, again using a knot of your choice. Now some people will go for a blood knot if they're using worm baits because the knot, the, the line will then stick out at 90 degrees to the, to the, to the knot, the tied knot. And if you cut that off at an angle, so it's a sh like a, almost like a, the, the line's a sharpened point, it can help to retain the worm. It will jag the worm. I stick with the three hook grinner because I like the knot to come out in the same way that the line went in. So that's what we've ended up with, with a hook snood. And we just put it on there to measure it. And it's come out at 10 inches. So we've got a Gemini snood clip, 18 pound hook snood, 
I've chosen red line for this. The Cox and Royal scratch and match hook. And we just need three of those. So here we go. I've saved you the pain of showing you tying all three, but I've ended up with three identical snoods, 10 inches long, detachable snood clips, Cox and Royal scratching match hooks, and 18 pound uh, snood line. So if we go to our rig body, and for convenience, let's just clip on a weight. So if you remember, because we parked it right at the beginning, we made our rig body. None of the swivels are actually set in position at the moment. They're all loose. So if we hang that up for a bit of convenience, always easier when I'm filming because it's almost like a third set of, set of hands. And we clip on one of the snoods directly onto the swivel. For crimping, I've got a pair of Fox crimping pliers. I find them, um, they're light enough. I think they, these are more designed for um, fresh water than, than sea water. But I find that they're quite, the, the, the multiplication of the, um, you know, because like, they're short and small, they don't put too much pressure so they don't over crimp. So I've just come down slightly from the knot at the top and I've crimped the top snood in place. We'll clip on our next hook snood, he says, as he's lost it. Right in front of your eyes, Mark, get your eyes tested. And we'll clip on the bottom one. And I don't actually want to fish this one below the weight. I want the bottom hook to sit above the weight so I'm just going to place that crimp in there. It will become clear when I show you in a sec. We'll look at the detail. And we'll put place that one above the weight and crimp it into place. When you crimp the bead uh, either side of the beads, tighten it up to the bead and then just ease off a fraction so that the bead's actually free to spin and move around. Um, again, we can look in depth in a minute. Look at some detail. And then for the middle one, I find it easier to do the top one first, then the bottom one. And then we'll look at this one for placement. And we don't want the top hook to be able to hook it, but we also want the hook to stay clear of the bottom set. And this is why it's handy to hang your rigs. So we just crimp that one into place. Do the same again. Make sure that we don't trap the beads and the swivel too tight. They've got a Got to have the ability to move. And there we have it. There is one detachable snood three hook scratch and rig. Just clear those lines at the top. And that's what we've ended up with. So we'll have a quick look at what we've done. We've just got a Gemini super strength clip for our weight clip. We've got a hook snood trapped with swivels, with a swivel between beads and crimps, swivel between bead and crimps, swivel between bead and crimps. And all snoods are detachable. So when you cast out and that's laid down, we've got an arrangement of three baits. You can have three separate baits. You can have a worm bait, a fish bait, a squid bait. You could put prawn on one. And then once you start to catch or once you winkle out that first fish, see what their preference is, what they're feeding on, you can duplicate it. But also the beauty is, detachable snoods for baiting up. Detachable snoods for unhooking the fish. You can leave that rig hanging on the rod rest, on the rod, detach your fish, put another baited snood on, put your fish in a bucket, get the rod and line out, cast your bait out, go and deal with your fish. For certain species, unhooking is easier with a detachable snood. That tiny little snood clip will pass through the gills of a flatfish, like a flounder. It makes it easier to unhook if you can pass the line through the gill or access it through the gill. Sometimes it's kinder to unhook a fish by detaching the snood. And this is what we're looking at. So, 
What does that do? It gives us three different positions in the water of the bait. It gives us the option to use three different baits or three like baits. It gives us a three hook scent trail. So there's three baits all doing their business. It makes it easier to unhook certain fish. And it just does what it says on the tin. It's an awesome scratching rig. A massive thank you to Shane, Fish and Dorset Life, for pointing me back in the direction of something that I'd already learned previously and for some ignorance on my side, forgotten about. I'd gone down that rabbit hole with long snoots and I'm glad he showed me the errors of my ways. How else can we benefit from this rig? We can make up some rig bodies and then we can make up multiple hook snoots. There's one, there's one, and there's a third. You can have three different line strengths, three different hook sizes, or you can have them all the same if you expect to have to be swapping kit around and changing things up. So it gives you the option to have sets rig bodies. As you can see, I've got two now there, one that I've made previously, one that we've just made on camera. The snoods are inter interactive between the two, so interchangeable, so you can change them about. You end up with a set of bodies, a set of hook snoods, and the choice is yours. Robert's your father's brother. So what would we do next? Well, I'd make up multiple snoods in different hook sizes. Make up three or four bodies to give myself some spares. I really like this. I've been using it quite a lot lately. It's funny how sometimes your fishing takes a U-turn and goes back to where it was previously, doesn't it? But this does fish well. Good scratching rig. 60 pound line, good for a casting up to a five ounce lead with a bit of a thump. Right, I hope that helps. I hope it's been interesting. Give it a go. What I'd really like is the comments. I'd like to know, is it a load of old tosh? <laughs> Do you think it's rubbish? Do you think we shouldn't use crimps? Do you think we should use a more captive lead clip? Some people like a fully captive lead clip. Is using a swivel at the top of this uh, rig body a mistake? Should it be a clip there and a swivel on the, on the shock leader? Would you even use swivels? Would you tie it differently? Do you use a variation of this? I'd love to hear all that. All of that stuff is amazing because it helps everyone. Everyone gets to read the comments. Everyone gets to see the discussion. But more so, if you try this out, let us know how you get on. I'd love to know what you've caught. Um, I don't need your secret mark or anything like that. Just let us know roughly where you're fishing, you're using it, and what you're catching. And uh, let's see how we get on. Um, looking forward to reading the comments. So, from me, from here for now it's goodbye with my woolly hat because it's freezing and I haven't lit the fire yet um, <laughs> take care tight lines happy fishing and I hope to see you again sometime soon bye for now